the, to look at the new power play or the old power, old new power play kind of thing today. What did you think about having everyone together? Yeah, it was good. Just uh, get through some uh, some of our routes, positioning, uh, get a feel for things, and what Spence is uh, looking to implement here. Uh, just kind of touching on it a little bit every day. Uh, we haven't had really any specific day fully focused on it. So, yeah, just uh, obviously good to get all all five guys out there zipping around and getting a feel for things, and and obviously a little little different setup with some of the roles and positioning and stuff. So just continue to uh, adapt and get used to that. There's one thing Spencer wants to see. What, do you, what would you say it is? More of something, less of something? Um, no, he hasn't said anything particularly too much yet. I think he just wants to try to use all of our abilities uh, collectively as best we can. Um, I think we want to, you know, have flexibility and uh, the ability to adapt uh, as penalty kills adapt to us and, and using different parts of the ice and how we attack and, and uh, create opportunities and get the results we want. So um, as the year goes on, you know, PKs seem to get sharper, they seem to get better really detailed and they really get to know the power plays they're going up against really, really well. Um, so I think uh, as the year progresses, a, a, a key for us, I think, is continuing to adapt, but sticking to uh, what we do well and what our, what our uh, foundation is or our structure and, and, and how we can uh, build it and get better as the year goes on. How valuable is it to have two shooting threats on both flanks? Uh, Sheldon was saying that's something that maybe with Mitch in the middle you'll have more of this year? Um, yeah, I think no doubt. Uh, um, you know, Obviously, we have the extra man, so anytime you can create uh, um, some space uh, for some good shooters, and uh, I think we all have the ability to put the puck in the net, but certainly, uh, um, uh, you know, utilizing Willie Shot, and then obviously we know what, what Matt's does. So, um, and I think just, you know, Mitchie's awareness and his ability to understand the play and read the play and think about it two, three steps ahead. Um, you know, he's going to always find ways to create opportunities, get opportunities himself, and uh, he's so good uh, when he's in the middle of the ice. Uh, almost nobody harder to stop because he's so hard to read and so unpredictable uh, uh, defending him that uh, you know he's going to get a lot of good looks himself or create opportunities for those guys on the flanks. Do you think there was a, maybe a lack of adaptability by the power play last season that contributed a bit to the well, I think certainly we we, uh, we worked at it and we talked about it. Um, you know, we didn't want to, I think at times, try to revamp everything. I think we, we had a lot of success early and a lot of good things that were built uh, into our power play. And then we seen the squeeze of sticks a little bit, I think. And, um, you know, just weren't able to have that mojo that uh, that we had early on. And, and uh, uh, you know, when you're going through stuff like that, it's, it's important that... Uh, you, you know, you don't get too much away from who you are. you got to stick to what's made you successful, especially when you've had success um, and the type of players and the talent we have on the ice. So I think just continue to hammer home, um, you know, key, uh, uh, key points that are, that are really good for uh, our power play and generating offense um, and not getting away uh, from what makes us successful, but at the same time looking to adapt as teams to adapt to us and how we can, we can utilize uh, uh, different parts of the ice, or obviously the different there's different personnel we have to uh, uh, find ways to get the, get the results we want. John, you're wearing the orange shirt. What have you learned about Canada's Indigenous history and, and reconciliation and those sorts of things? Well, obviously it's tremendously uh, difficult uh, to understand and, and uh, extremely sad, but uh, extremely important to learn and understand where we've come from and an important part of our history and important culture that should be. Uh, Really, uh, in part of a uh, part of all of our lives, um, you know, I, I grew up around a lot of Indigenous people playing the game of lacrosse, and the game of lacrosse is uh, is one of our national sports, and um, was around that community a lot and that culture and uh, tremendous people. Um, you know, obviously learned a lot through the game, the, the game of lacrosse itself, and and um, you know, fell in love with it. So, um, you know, to me, it, uh, it 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 has a little extra meaning for me there. But I think it should have significant meaning to everybody just because of what happened and how we can learn from it. And, and not just, uh, I think, uh, reconcile, but uh, uh, make this, uh, you know, the Indigenous peoples and, and their culture and who they are a main part of our society and us as Canadians. Speaking of, of lacrosse, there's a, a really interesting moment, I thought, with uh, your uncle in the Amazon series where he talks to you about being an elite athlete in your sport as you head into your 30s. What, did, what was your takeaway of his message to you in that? Yeah, uh, I've leaned on him for a lot of things at different points in my life, uh, and no doubt now I can learn a lot from him and his ability to sustain uh, his level of play um, at a high level through um, 
you know, through your 30s and, and still being extremely productive uh, and still being one of the best players in the world. So I was around that a lot, so now I can draw back on that and, and obviously just listening to him speak and just understanding how much more knowledge you have because of the experiences you've gotten through the game and how you have to kind of to adapt um, as things uh, are, are changing around you. And obviously we see the youth and, and the type of talent and, and uh, players that are upcoming, whether it's within our team or around the league and how you have to continue to kind of um, you know, see where the game's going, see where your own personal game's going and how you kind of adapt uh, to that so you can, can, you know, be consistent and playing at a high level. Do you still play any lacrosse? Are they lacrosse? I'm trying to get my son uh, picking up the stick a little bit, so uh, I don't play anything competitively, but I'll throw the ball around every once in a while. What kind of, what kind of skills cross over from lacrosse? Yeah, there's a lot with um, people talk significantly about uh, the hand-eye coordination, but the biggest thing I found for me was just... Uh, you know, the physical nature of lacrosse, I, I would say, is just a little bit higher um, than, than hockey. And your ability to roll off checks, move through traffic, um, you know, take contact with and without the ball. Uh, so being able to make plays through that contact and whatnot, I seem, seem to really help me uh, in tight areas, small areas around the ice, around the net, just find ways to, to create openings and get shots off or protect the puck and create plays or extend extend plays and, and whatnot. So I always found kind of... Um, just being able to, to fight through contact and absorb contact and help find ways to create time and space through that. I played uh, uh, the year I was drafted to Oshawa. Um, I played through that summer, Junior A with the Saga Tomahawks. Uh, so I was lucky enough, Oshawa was great about it. And uh, I played that summer. Uh, I went to the following tryouts the next year and something just felt different uh, that year after my first year in the O. And I just kind of knew it was time to really kind of make sure I was putting full commitment off the ice as well uh, throughout the summertime uh, uh, with where things were headed hockey-wise. To follow up on Kevin's question, um, some of the guys that played on that ridiculous Toronto Blues team, whether it be Alex Pietrangelo or Stamkos, they were saying that, um, you know, you guys would go to tournaments and when you weren't playing, you'd always have a lacrosse stick with you. I mean, when you were a young kid, I mean, was that your first love? Uh, I would say it was uh, it was actually probably hockey because I, I still remember being not even two the first time picking up a hockey stick or going skating with my dad for the first time uh, watching hockey on TV. Um, but I still remember the first time I picked up my lacrosse stick. I think it was four or five years old at my uncle Danny's house, and uh, um, you know him and my uncle John started playing at St. Christopher's, and and uh, he kind of brought me into the Oakville Minor Hockey or Oakville Minor Lacrosse Association, and um, started playing there and fell in love with it. Seeing him, uh, my uncle John, my uncle Peter, who who played a little bit professionally too, um, you know, and you have family members that are professional athletes and one who's you know the best in the world at it it's pretty easy to fall in love and to look up to them and uh, obviously a tremendous influence is around me for it so it was uh, it was as exciting getting to the spring and summertime to pick up my lacrosse stick in the summers and then uh, you know as late August September rolled around same thing for hockey so it was a tremendous balance and really fortunate that I had uh, I had the game of lacrosse as well. Is your son drawn to it? Uh, not quite just yet. Uh, <laughs> just trying to just try to get him to understand a little bit. So uh, yeah, I was just goofing around here or there. I think uh, he's more just just excited to see the ball kind of flying around. I don't think he's too understanding too much of what's going on. But uh, uh, yeah, it's fun to kind of now share that with him. John, last night Curtis Gabriel described Michael Bunting as a greasy rat. Uh, is that kind of something you're sensing from him? And what do you enjoy about playing someone who has that kind of ingredient? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I, I like to like to uh, dress it up a little bit more, I guess. I think Bunce, what he does is really well and really effective. Uh, you know, he's just very determined, and, and not just that, but just such good awareness of the game and how to how to play with uh, good players and um, just how to make an impact. Uh, it's not maybe what flies off, uh, uh, you know, or stands out on the ice. He just seems to just find a way to get himself involved, be around the puck. He's got really good, really good hands, uh, obviously good timing and, and just um, awareness around the net. And, and But it's just extremely determined to find a way to make an impact, and whether that's with or without the puck. And certainly uh, he's been kind of a, a late bloomer and someone who's had to prove a lot of people wrong and kind of uh, just always had that attitude of uh, uh, finding a way. You would have seen Rasmus Sandy develop a lot over the last few years. Is there anything different you've seen from him this year that suggests he's ready for that top six role? Well, I think uh, we know his uh, puck moving ability, his offensive ability, his instincts and, and whatnot, but uh, 
Um, you know, just the difficulties and the nuances of being a defenseman in the NHL is, is very tough. Uh, you know, just being strong at the net front, good along the walls, uh, you know, ability, just having really good gap control and good footwork that way. And uh, you can just see there seems a little bit more comfort, uh, better feel for the game in that sense and how to kind of start to put it all together. And, and uh, we know he's going to be a tremendous player for us uh, and have a great career. So uh, every year he just seems to, he just seems every part of the game just continues to evolve and mature a little more.